I'm Adam, and that's Diesel. He's from the desert, I think, or at least that's where he was found wandering around by himself. So I adopted him, and now he's a beach dog. It was always my dream to move from England to live in sunny Southern California, and now here I am. My goal is to inspire people just like you to chase your dreams, and most importantly, get out there and find your everyday adventure. What's up guys, welcome back to another episode. I'm here at Rottweiler with Chris, who's the owner of Rottweiler Performance. And today we are gonna give the KTM some love. So we've got some parts to put on this bike. And first of all, we're actually gonna get it on the dyno because here at Rottweiler, they have an epic dyno cell. So I wanna see exactly what power this thing makes standard. I've never put a bike of mine on the dyno. I've done cars, so this is gonna be a first for me. So without further ado, let's put it on that dyno and see how many ponies the old girl is making. So I'm not taking credit for the motorcycle tire that looks like a car tire. The last owner apparently didn't like to get over on the, uh, the sides of this thing very much. So these chicken strips are not from me and I will be replacing this tire. However, it is giving us a nice contact patch right now. So. Well, who needs kickstands? You can just leave it standing straight up. <laughs> right. Okay, so we're gonna do a down and pull in fourth gear. We put 40 pounds in the tires and try to keep everything as consistent as we can before and after. You know, we don't wanna do pulls with the tire at 20 pounds one day and 40 pounds another day. You know, you're gonna get inconsistent results most likely. So we're gonna try to get the most consistency out of it and we're gonna do an uh, initial baseline pull and see what this thing uh, puts out. We can do the modifications and we'll come back. 87.5. 85.2, I'm gonna modify mine to point All right. 87.5, 85.2. Wait, I, I've seen a problem with your execution. Do you know how many pounds you have in each one of these straps? Right. Next time I come in here, I know for a fact that he's gonna have ratchet straps with a Newton meter indicator on them. <laughs> So he knows exactly how much it's he's actually got. not a bad idea. I wonder if they exist. So I wanted to get air fuel ratios off this thing. Mm -hmm. um, the 950s didn't have any narrow band O2s. They didn't need them because they're not fuel injection. So the only way you can really get O2s is basically either drill a hole in the exhaust and tap into it with a wide band O2, uh -huh. um, which is one of these right here. Uh -huh. um, or drill we, a hole. We put a stuffer. So we, we can drill the hole. Drill you good hole. with that? I don't care. So I got to find, I don't think these things bifurcate into each other. I think they have a, the H pipe right here. Would that do it? Yeah. I don't like to profess that I know what I'm talking about, but every now and again, I do surprise myself. <laughs> <laughs> so we've made a discovery. So uh, the exhaust pipe actually has this little guy stuffed in the end, which I took this off the other day and I saw this and I figured, oh, okay, this is just uh, like a, a little cap that just makes it look pretty and this can't be removed. Well, with a bit of brute force, it can be. Yeah, and so now, we have much more of a straight pipe, and hopefully that's gonna give us half a horsepower more. So this is the port for the wide band O2, so we're gonna measure so we can measure our air fuel ratios. Got it. Really get everything nailed. No, you said 85.2. <laughs> I'm buying lunch. <laughs> uh, 84.1. Okay, so you were almost bang on. You were 1.1 off. We're gonna put the stuffers back in. Let's yeah. just see what happens. Okay. Everyone wants to know what happens when I run these. It gets quieter. What does it do to my power? Let's figure it out. Okay, okay so we got them back in. So let's see if these little guys make any difference to power. You're, you're, you're kind of swapping horsepower a little bit. So you're losing, you know, a good three and a half horsepower on the bottom. Kind of gets negligible up near the top and then it seems to be a little bit more up up near red line it's creating a little bit more back pressure you lose three and a half on the bottom and you gain about one on the top it's okay. not a worthy 
it's not a worthy exchange in my opinion for an off-road bike there you go so if you have these little decibel killers and you have a ktm 950 and probably any bike i guess take them out sounds better and makes more power just much more power but it makes more power well, while they're certified there you go Boost out. It is time we have all of the stuff laid out right here that is gonna go onto the bike. So Chris is gonna run through this, tell you exactly what it is, what it does, and why it's better than stock. Okay, super quickly, this is the intake system that we're known for. This is what really built the company right here. So this will replace the stock intake system, which is horribly clogged up and lethargic and doesn't allow the bike to breathe. So this allows the bike to breathe, makes the bike a lot easier to work on. This is the all important jetting kit. So this is basically a jet kit with all the right stuff in there. These are the flex jets. So what this does is it allows you to adjust your, your fuel squirrel, front fuel screw, that's hard fuel to say. Squirrel? Fuel squirrel? Where's your fuel squirrel? We need, we need <laughs> to see the squirrel. He's, he's actually doing better. We'll show you the squirrel. Okay, good. Uh, so this is the, the fuel screw um, that basically allows you to adjust make minute uh, adjustments for idle and off idle at high altitudes. So this is what we call our snap out. This is the second thing we created that allows you to get to your intake system by hand with only a screwdriver. You can get all the way down to the carburetors and have the carburetors in your hand within less than a minute. As it would up to 12 screws okay. to get all that stuff apart, all right. to get that stuff in your hand. So for people that are traveling and they want to get their hands on things, they need to rejet or fix something that allows you to get to all the important stuff that feeds your motor very quickly. And this is our tail tidy that basically just cleans up the whole ass end of the thing because nobody okay. likes a big ass. Uh, 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 no. Okay. Uh, we have these for all kinds of different models. This is the first one we actually made it for. That's so awesome. it just gets rid of this whole mess right here. That's cleans cool. Cleans everything up. So it, and it'll just mount underneath this. Yep. Wow. Yeah, that's going to completely transform that rear end. Yeah. Dump some weight too. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Well, I guess we're going to smash over to a B-roll montage of Chris pulling this thing apart and installing these goodies. So basically what you're looking at here is the way the intake works is really unique where it actually pulls it in these two small holes here, brings it out through the carburetors or around the carburetors as I say, up through this filter and then back down into velocity stacks. When air has to change all these directions, you start losing velocity. So the secret to ours is because we have a filter right above the throttle bodies and it's breathing from the top, it's literally pulling clean air straight into the velocity stacks. And so some of the secret to our horsepower is that we're not bouncing air molecules all over the place and slowing things down so how does that help with air temperatures as well does it heat up by being passed around through the carbs and down through here at all yeah, probably a little bit i think it's negligible okay. you know it's, it doesn't seem to be much but it's i'm not sure exactly why they designed it this way uh, probably for a plenum mm -hmm. you know it's a really interesting design where it goes through and around the bodies of the carburetors and then back up and down through it's it's very unique but uh now we, we found that uh, getting rid of all this and you know with our system is a lot easier to work on. You actually shed some a decent amount of weight, a couple pounds, and uh, you make a lot of horsepower. So it's it's kind of a win 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 win. Sign me up. Yep. Look who showed up with lunch. <laughs> Carrie came with some food for us. Again. So we're gonna have a little lunch break. Uh, so the bike right now, all the way stripped down. We basically got everything off. We're just about to start putting on the. Um, new intake the little uh, led light surround is on which looks so much cleaner this back end is amazing first we're gonna eat some food oh my gosh you little angel <laughs> hi. hi hi looks like his hands are working a little bit better he's kind of using them he didn't yeah. use them before yeah he definitely look like his head looks way more stable mm -hmm. now than it did so if you guys watched my video where I came here and had our first meeting, then you will have seen that we met Scratches, the squirrel. And uh, he's doing pretty good. Last time he was a little bit sideways, and now he's definitely getting a little bit more upright and apparently ran across the parking lot the other day. So for all of you guys asking about him, here he is. He's doing good and hopefully on the road to recovery. So he's, he's got more use of his arms there. Oh, yeah. He's, he'll, he'll kind of fall over. If you, oh, there he goes. No, oh, he's, that's way better than he was. Way better, yeah. Way better. Oh. I think he's going to make a full recovery. So the bike is back together again. Chris has been hard at work and uh, obviously we don't have the rack on the back anymore and I don't have the crash bars on because we're gonna get it back on the dyno again. So they will go back on. However, it's finished and it is ready to get dynoed. So let me throw over to Chris to explain exactly what it is we've done and why we have. 
So basically what we've done is we've extracted this big horrible thing right here. So this is the stock air box. Really heavy, takes up a lot of space. That goes in the trash. Then we've installed all our bits and pieces underneath here that we're gonna show you real quick. These were the first items that we really created, that kind of what built our business. We saw a lot of pain points in here with taking things apart and maintenance, so we fixed that. So the first way we fixed it is normally you take a key, key pops the seat off, and then filter maintenance on the sock bikes was absolutely horrible. So what we did is we created this little part that we call the snap out. I got my little handy screwdriver in here already to where instead of 12 bolts taking this thing off, it is literally one quarter turn screw and this whole thing comes off. This was the part that we wanted to prove to people that we weren't a, a one trick pony. Then we've got our pre-filters here. These will take about 95% of the brunt of the dust are a lot easier to clean. You can do this by hand. You can actually just reach down in there and grab the D-ring, twist the D-ring. And just like that, you've got the filter off. This quick, with a key and a screwdriver, you can have the filter off. And if you want to go a little bit further, twist these guys off. And you can have the carbs in your hands in 30 seconds. And you were saying before, you would have had to have taken the tanks off and everything right. to get to that. You want to do any adjustments whatsoever on these carbs or do any kind of work, tanks off, airbox off. I mean, it's horrific. It's literally an hour and 45 minutes, two hours. You just saw me do it in 30 seconds. Yeah. They're right here. And we added these uh, fuel screws right here. So these are remote fuel screws. So for altitude, you can adjust these two guys here. And we've got our idle right here. So as your idle changes, depending on the altitude and the mood of the bike, you can just reach down right there, pop your seat off and tweak your idle, you're ready to go. I mean, I had heard that what you can do in 30 seconds is amazing, but I didn't That's my life. <laughs> yeah. So there you go, guys. That is the beauty of Rottweiler Parts. And uh, yeah, now it's gonna make maintenance uh, and any type of like small fine tune adjustments very easy. So I Let's think- not forget the power. And that's what I was just getting to, Chris. Sorry. Let me do my job. I'll let Sorry. you do yours. Gee, this guy, this guy. Let's go get it on the dyno and let's go and see how many more ponies we got from these epic mods. Okay, so it's a day later and uh, the bike is sick. It's got an IV. Dr. Chris is here at its side looking after it. Uh, it's all very dramatic. The bike's actually fine. And uh, this is uh, testing a theory that Chris had that kind of proves that actually the issue that we thought we had uh, is nothing to do with the work we've been doing. So basically what happened was went to do those final power runs with all the new mods on and uh, it wasn't doing what it should have been doing. It basically wasn't making any power at the top end. It kept dying, kept stalling out. It would flood the carbs and then it would run lean. It just, the bike was being weird. And so uh, I had to go. And so Chris was like, dude, I got to figure this out because they've done thousands of these kits and this has never happened. So yeah, you took a look at it and do you want to tell the guys what happened? Well, we basically found out it was just a faulty fuel pump. So it was a bit confusing because doing, you know, we've sold you know, 3000 of these kits to customers and, and everyone in the garage has done these things. Right. And I'm looking at this thing going, you know, this thing should be rocking on the dyno. So we went through and, and did a lot of kind of uh, A and B tests and things like that. And we found out it was the fuel pump. It just so happened to go at the same time that we did the mod. So we got this IV in here and started uh, gravity feeding it and that fixed the problem. And I made a few tweaks. That gave me the opportunity to get in and do a little bit of jetting work right, right there and actually tweak out a little bit more horsepower and get a bunch of more top end out of it. And I was really happy about that. So it was kind of a happy accident. Perfect. So, well, happy? You didn't seem happy on those texts. <laughs> Chris is like, you owe me. I've been working on this damn bike. Can't figure it out. I mean, how many times did you have those carbs apart? Oh, three or four times. You know, just trying to figure out little anomalies or whatever. Okay. But I, Yeah, I, I genuinely feel bad. But like you say, these things happen. And when you are modifying vehicles, you know, th this, this kind of stuff happens. But I'm glad that it was nothing to do with anything we did. And in fact, it was just my dodgy pump. And actually what's funny is I rode this the day before I bought it in here and it did stall on me like four or five times. And I said that when I came in, but I thought maybe the carbs were playing up or something and that it wouldn't matter because we we're going to reject them. So yeah, that fuel pump was probably about ready to give up the ghost anyway. And then yeah, it just happened to die on the operating table. So anyway, without further ado, I haven't actually seen what power it makes. Chris has obviously done these runs to make sure it's all good. I've just showed up again. So let's do a run so I can see what these power figures are because he hasn't told me yet. He's just said, we're making power. Um, and let's see what he does. Let's do it. All right, let's go. So the numbers are in and my goodness, this graph looks a whole lot better than it did yesterday when we were doing this. So. What we can see up here is the blue run 
is the stock run. So the blue one at the bottom, that's the one when we very first dynoed the bike. The green run is with the bad fuel pump. So you can see up the top here, there was all kinds of weirdness going on where we were actually losing power over stock. So we could tell something was wrong. And then by eliminating the fuel pump and running this IV drip system so that we know that the bike is getting the fuel it needs, then we have the red run. And look at the distance between, so the area under the curve right there on that red. So 82.9 to 87.4. So we basically made five horsepower across the entire rev range. Pretty much. Wow. And it's consistent the whole way, which is yeah. really neat. This is considerable power gains across everything, especially down here at 5,000 RPM. That's where I'm really going to feel it because that's where you spend most of the time riding the bike. So, man, that's killer. Now, the problem we've got is that we're relying on this at the moment to fuel the bike because the fuel pump is being overnighted from Japan, fast and furious style. It's not, is it? It's coming from like... California, yeah, somewhere. California somewhere. Hey, we'll, we'll just make out it. Sure. Yeah, we're overnighting it from Japan. Yeah. And uh, we're actually going to get a new fuel pump that is going to do much better than this standard one uh, and is considerably cheaper. The new fuel pump is actually from an airplane, right? It's for an airplane. So, yeah. yeah. So, much more reliable and much cheaper in stock. I figure if you lose a fuel pump on a bike, eh, it's a bad day. If you use a fuel, lose a fuel pump on an airplane, it's a really bad day. Really bad day. Okay. Probably your last day. So, so, this bike is getting upgraded with aircraft aerospace grade parts. So I'm not going to be able to show you any riding on the road, but what we are going to be able to do is go out for a ride because this man owns 20 something bikes. Yeah, 26 or so. And how often do you ride them? No, almost never. Yeah, so he's going to come out and he's going to show me some of the local trails. I'm going to take this. He's going to pick one of his 20 odd bikes. I'm going to go for a ride. So I'm sorry that it's been a bit of a tease showing the power we've made, but not showing you the bike on the road. But I promise you, as soon as we can, we will get out there and I will do an episode where we go out for a ride and he can show me the ropes because I'm also not a brilliant off-road rider. So hopefully he can make me quicker. But dude, thank you so much. I Absolutely. I'm so appreciative of everything you've done and this ball ache because this this is not what they do. Rottweiler here are a... Perf they are a they are, I do, Owen. I do, I do own a lot. I do. They are a performance parts business. They are not a mechanic shop. And this is the big boss of the whole place. So the fact that he was here getting his fingernails dirty, working on my bike is a privilege. So I really do appreciate that. And I'm expensive. He, he is very expensive. Right, luckily he doesn't last very long. So <laughs> the hourly rate's good. But. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you need any parts for your KTM or Husqvarna, then check out Rottweiler. I will put all of their information in the description below. This is an old bike for them. They work on all that new fancy stuff out there. So uh, anything you've got that needs new parts, needs, getting, needs making faster, better, stronger, lighter, all of it, they got it. Thank you guys for watching. Remember, smash that thumbs up button. That really helps with the whole YouTube algorithm thing. If you aren't subscribed, please subscribe because I'd love to see you here again. And until next time, remember, don't do anything I wouldn't do. See ya.